Hey guys, it's JD here with Otis Design. We've got a boxer with us today, and I want to give you a little bit of insight into our design process, as well as do an unboxing, show you what you get in the box, and run through a comprehensive build tutorial. Here at Otis HQ, we're constantly developing new products that bring change and innovation to the vaping industry. When looking at the billet box, we found that there's a lack of atomizers that truly bring out the capabilities of this device. We designed an RDTA that would allow you to run the coils that you want to get the flavor and vapor production that you've always been looking for from your billet box. Let's take a closer look at what you're getting in the package. I'm gonna pop the sleeve right off here. And what we've got is a simple casing, boxer Otis design. Inside we've got two velvet pouches. One of these is gonna have your device. One is gonna have your 510 build adapter. We'll pop those right out. And next up is we've got two bags with spare parts and an instruction manual to finish it off. So let's take a look at the spare bags. In here we've got the Allen key that we'll be using to clamp down our coil. We've got a flush 510 designed and uh, included with the uh, boxer. And we've got an Otis branded billet box firing button. There's some spare O-rings as well as a spare gasket in here for your lens. The other thing that's in here are some components for the 510 build adapter. So let's take a look at that now. So I can feel out the adapter in here. So I'll pop this open. And here she is. This is a media blasted finish, corrosion uh, resistant finish applied to this adapter. 510 threaded. And the boxer is going to be sliding right into here after some assembly. So let's take a look at the unit itself. Just pop open this velvet bag here. And there she is. This is the Boxer, media blasted uh, stainless steel finish, CNC machine. We've got a top cap and a main housing, a positive post that's gold plated stainless steel. There's a flat head for removal of the post and the positive, uh, the positive pin. If we hold our lens down, this is a polycarbonate lens by the way, resistant to men uh, menthol and uh, citric uh, juices, it's inert. We can pull the top cap right off of here. Okay. Inside here we've got our positive post, gold plated, set screw, I believe it's a M4 by a 0.7 a thread, so it's a very beefy set screw, it's not going to strip, um, obviously there's no need to torque this down significantly. Uh, here we've got two wicking ports as well as a central airflow tunnel. If we slide our uh, polycarbonate lens off, we can see right into our reservoir, that's 6 milliliters if it's fully filled. And we've got a filling screw here, which we'll explain how to use now. There's also an airflow control ring included. You can actually disassemble the positive post and remove that ring right out uh, if you want to have the maximum airflow going through your device. This is Black Ultim, as well as the insulator underneath the positive post. Uh, one thing to watch out for, if this is not fully tightened down, or if there are for any reasons any kind of uh, protrusion from this positive post, the contact, uh, or the clearance rather, between that positive post and this top cap is, is quite tight. Tolerances are very tight, so if you have a, a short a resistance approaching zero, you might want to look that this is clamped down properly. On your posts, you've got some detents which will allow you to snip your leads clear of the lens and clear of the, um, the top cap here. So let's assemble the 510 adapter. This is all in the instructions, by the way. Um, we'll go over the manual in a second. So in here, I've got a couple of components. I've got a positive pin as well as a uh, insulator, obviously to insulate the positive side of this circuit from the negative, which is the housing itself. We'll go ahead and pop those together. There she is. And what this is gonna be used for is we keep this piston all the way down we grab our uh, disassembled boxer that's without the top cap and we're going to slide her right in here the fit might be tight if it's significantly tight you can just stretch out the, uh, the sides of this adapter um, to a reasonable amount to where it just falls right into place when this is assembled there are actually some um, some lips at the top that hold the boxer from just rising right out of the adapter that allows you to thread this down onto your regulated device and actually press up on the positive pin, clamping this entire thing in place. 
Looking at the manual, here's the RDTA itself. We've got some assembly drawings showing how to assemble your device and what parts are included. Bill of materials. And some instructions on building the coil, test firing the unit, wicking, filling, and the airflow adjustment. Of course, enjoy the experience. Uh, definitely takes some fine tuning for you to get the exact vape that you want out of your device. Okay, I'm gonna take my boxer now. I've got my adapter on a mod and I'm ready to build. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my top cap off, remove my lens. Without this being threaded all the way down, I'm gonna take the device and pop it into place right at the top of the adapter, thread it on. It's ready, it's clamped, it's ready to build. So let's go ahead and pull these set screws off. They're very robust. Okay, two set screws off and my deck is ready to build. Uh, you can go ahead and slide your leads into the posts and just center it fore to aft there. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this back down and then trim my leads. Make sure not to cross thread when you're starting. Okay, and now I can adjust my coil so that it's not touching the uh, positive post at the bottom. I'm gonna raise her up about one millimeter. The higher you raise this, the better, because your wick is not gonna be in contact with the deck or with the post. With this device, we gotta reduce the amount of wick that's touching the deck or the post, or else you're gonna get some seeping of liquid onto the deck and out. This is an open deck design. It's very critical that you wick it properly and maintain an unsaturated deck. Right now I'm ready to trim my leads here. There we go. And if you have any leads remaining and you can't get to them with your tools, you can flatten it right down. All right, we're ready to dry fire this. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, nice glow. Nice even glow. All right. So we're going to grab some cotton. Have it lying here on the shop. Perfect. Now the lead length for the cotton is uh, specified in the manual, but it's up to your preference how deep you want it to go into your well. I'm just going to cut it fairly short in terms of how deep it's going to go. And I'm just going to thin out the edges so that we get some good saturation. You don't want this wick to be too thin on its way into the wicking port or else you're going to have some seepage because you're bringing up too much liquid onto this deck. At the same time, you're going to find a happy medium between that and uh, your flavor becoming muted or dry if you're uh, vaping uh, uh, too high of a power or too much, uh, too much chain vaping, too much airflow. Twist this a little so I can grab it with my pliers, tweezers. Grab my tails, lift them up, and drop them down into that hole. I can uh, I can come in here and grab them from underneath, pull them down through, or just push in from the top. I want to keep the cotton away from that post so as not to be just wicking onto the metal surface. All right, pull that out a bit so we're covered there and keep it narrow and now we're wicked. All right, let's go ahead and prime this. For filling, I have here my empty tank. I'm going to be removing the fill plug with the device level on table. So I'm just going to undo it. Uh, once it's lubricated, it should be just hand tightened and you can remove it by hand as well. I'm going to take my chubby gorilla bottle or similar bottle. I'm going to actually insert the tip, rotate and fill so that the wick holes are actually at the top. This way I'm not getting juice pumped out of the wick holes and onto the deck where it's eventually going to get down onto the device. And now I rotate it back and I'm done. Go ahead and take my screw. And that's for on the go filling. Wonderful. Okay, 
So now we're filled up. Okay, so let's give this a bit. Got our drip tip, put this ergo tip, and we're ready to go. A lot of vapor production. If you're chain vaping on this, you're gonna watch out that you're not uh, drying out your wick too quickly. It's a balancing act depending on your application, of course. That's up to your preference. Uh, things to look out for with this are if you've had it sitting in your billet box for a long time, you always wanna keep it upright just like another atomizer. Uh, another thing is that you wanna pop your panel off and check that you don't have liquid uh, or condensation rather creeping down from your deck around the edges of the device and pulling against this lens. It's not enough to cause any kind of damage to your device, but if it builds up enough, you'll have a dot here on your uh, panel, which you, which you should just keep clean, regular maintenance. With this Alton box, you can see right in through the panel onto the boxer, but you can build up some condensation on the deck that will creep or seep down through that junction. So you wanna just look out that, uh, that you're you, you know, maintaining your box regularly and taking it off, cleaning it once in a while. It should not be leaking or seeping profusely enough to have liquid coming down onto or near your electronics. That is not a regular occurrence. So if you have that, uh, you're either having your deck oversaturated by dripping or you have uh, your wicking is too loose in your, in your holes here. So these are the things to look out for when you're using the boxer. And other than that, you're able to get massive airflow, massive flavor out of the billet box. Try it again here. 